Hi and welcome to Easy Fishing. Today I'm going to show you how to set up a stick float. Um, this will be part one and in part two I will show you how to set up a regular float. So what do we need? Well some line here, a float, this is just a small Drennan stick float, an alloy stemmed one, Some mix sizes of anchor shot, some stots in size 8 and 10, a pair of pincers to put them on the line, and a loop tie to tie a loop, a pair of scissors, some ready tied hooks, and some lengths of silicone rubber. So, let's get going. First thing. Select your silicone rubber to suit the diameter of your float. Now just to save time, I've pre-cut this. That's the tip one. Short piece of clear silicone for in the middle. And a longer piece for the base. I also have my shotting tube here, which I use to shot up my pole floats. It's merely a, a cheap glass vase that I got from a supermarket for about a fiver, good thick one, full of water. You can buy um, ready-made shotting tubes from people like Census. They're about coming on for a metre long and a 20 odd quid, but this will do. So, <clears throat> take a piece of line, thread your rubbers onto it. Thread the top rubber on first, the larger diameter. Size wise, I guess it's probably about five millimeters long. Wet the line. Slide it over. Next, take the end of the line and thread the shorter of the two pieces of finer silicone on. This will be the one for the middle of the float. Wet the float stem to enable the rubber to slide up. Now there's no set position, I've got it about a centimetre down from the base of the body and then just add the last piece of silicone rubber. This one needs to be a bit longer, this is probably 10 millimetres long and overlaps the end of the float. This is what it should look like. Longer piece at the bottom, short piece in the middle, larger diameter below the coloured tip. I like to push it down so it grips tightly onto the shoulder so the float has less inclination to move when you strike. So the next thing to do is to look at the float. Most floats have the weight printed on the side of them. This one tells you it takes 0 0.8 of a gram and four number fours. Now, when you see this written on a float, it doesn't mean you shot it with four number fours. It's just a, a rough guide to the, the amount of weight the float will carry. Now, while in faster water, you could stick four number fours on there but I choose to do what is called a tapered pattern which is the most common for a stick float. They're called normally shirt button style where the shots are evenly spaced out like the buttons on a shirt or what they call a bulk where the shots are pulled together to form one lump of lead. Um, you also need to consider uh, the fact you need to have a lighter shot 
nearer the hook. So we're going to break this down. We're going to put a number 10 closest to the hook followed by a number 8. So we'll do that now. Change glasses, quick slurp of tea. So take your style pincers and your shot. Lay the line in the slot. It's a bit fiddly, but you very soon get used to it. Nip it on with your style pincers. Try and nip it across the whole length, not in the middle. And don't over tighten it, it should move. Then we add a number eight stop. Right, the next step is, is to add the largest amount of shot. Now, <coughs> on anchor shot, on each division, they have printed the weight. And if you look, a number four is twice the size of a number six, and number six, uh, although it doesn't say it on the stocks, is approximately twice the weight of a number eight, and a number eight is approximately twice the weight of a ten. So we're going to split it down here. We're going to add uh, two number fours to start off with. They will go nearest the float. Right. Let's get those in place. Now, with these non-toxic shot, it's a good idea to open them up with your fingernail and then squeeze them shut. Open them up again and they will have softened very slightly you'll have loosened the hinge off place them on the line now you can use a pair of pliers for this a lot of anglers use their teeth pay for it in later years i'm going to use a pair of uh, fingers for this try and make sure the shot hangs centrally on the line Another number four. Try when you're putting the shot on. When putting split shot on, try and line the slots so they are in line. Helps to prevent spins. It won't be perfect, but do the best you can. Right, so at the moment we have two number fours, a number eight and a number ten. So now we have to work out what shot we need. So I think we could probably put... Let's work this out. So I reckon we could probably put three number sixes so we're going to put three number sixes on the line and then check it for weight in the tube you can make up any permutation you like you can shot it with all sixes in theory you could shot it with all eights and a lot of anglers will when they're aiming for finer presentation but for beginners purposes this is probably easiest place them on the line beneath the bigger shot. So we are left with a string of shot, two number fours, three number sixes, an eight and a ten. Now I don't think this will be enough. Let's give you a close up. Look. 
like that. Pull the rubber, the float down so it's touching the top shot, shot, and drop it in the tube. Now, as you can see, the float, that amount of shot has just taken the float down to the top of the silicone rubber and the base of the orange paint, which would probably be about right. But what I'm going to do is add one more number eight stop. Drop it back in the tube. And I would say that that is about perfect. That's got about five millimeters, quarter of an inch sticking out of the top. Some people might say uh, you need to dot it down further, but you have to allow for the weight of the hook and the maggot. Move the float up the line. Now, where you've pinched the shot on the line, there is a good chance you might have slightly over squeezed it and damaged the shot. So what we do is we move the shot up the line. If it's tight, don't force it. Use your fingernail, open up the split and move it. Pinch it back into position again. Do the same with the rest of the shot. I right, say so if it's tight, don't force it. It's all too easy. It's all too easy to damage your line by forcing shot up. It creates heat, friction, and damages the line. Some of them will move very easily, might even need tightening up a bit. This one, for example, needs tightening slightly. but never jam them on so they're removable. They should be able to move under nice steady pressure. Now where this shot was pinched on the line, I can see that there is a slight mark on the line. And this is why we're moving the shot up. The stots will slide a lot easier. Once you've moved the shot up, tie a loop just below them. Use it. I'm always going to say use a loop tire. Always wet the loop knot. Pull it tight, maintain a steady pressure for a couple of seconds and take it off the tire. Then you just need to snip the loose end off, the so-called tag end is a term a lot of people use. And if you run your fingers down that bit of line, you you can actually feel a couple of places where the shot has pinched the line. That is why you want to uh, discard it. Cut a tag end, don't cut it too tight, two or three millimetres. And there we have it. One stick float, one set of shots, correctly weighted. Now, the next thing is to decide how you want to do your shot. Like I said, you have two choices, basically strung out shotting called short shirt button or a bulk. Now, here's the easiest way to describe a bulk. And this is what it looks like. You have all your shot bolt together there, preferably just touching, and three evenly spaced smaller shot, the bottom one just above the loop to join the hook length. And that's it, it's as simple as that. Two choices, there are others obviously, but there are your two choices, a bulk and droppers, either one, two or three droppers, just move the rest up to the bulk or an evenly strung out called a shirt 
button style. Just think of the buttons on your shirt and you'll understand it. Now, the next thing, attaching a hook length. If you've bought, this one I've got here is just uh, one I grabbed. It's uh, a 16 barbless silverfish maggot to two pound eight ounce line. When you buy a Drennan one, Inside the packet, you'll even find a set of instructions as to how to unwind the hook length, avoiding tangling. This is the mark of quality and attention to detail that leads me to use Drennan Tackle and recommend them. So following the instructions, take your hook out of its packet and unwind it. Sometimes a little fiddly, don't rush. Try and avoid, avoid at all costs any knot in the hook length. To attach it, you take the loop from your hook length here. And the loop at the end of your rig that you have just tied. Here. Pass the loop from the hook length over the loop at the end of your rig. Hold it there between your finger and thumb. Take your hook and drop it back through the loop on the end of your rig. Gently slide it down. And although it's hard to see on camera, it'll have a lovely, neat collection like that. To change it, just push, grasp the line, push them together, slide it off, and change your hook length. Supposing you've got a blunted hook, broke the hook length, getting caught in trees, underwater snags, etc. And there you have it. So that is the correct way to tie a stick float rig. Happy fishing.